Well, hello everyone. I'm Jill Bloom, group publisher of Roofing Contractor, Walls and Ceilings, and Building and Closure. And first, I want to welcome Ryan Groth, the CEO of Sales Transformation Group. Ryan, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me back again, Jill. Well, it's it's an honor. And truly, what was so fun last time we talked, you know, kind of going through these three levers of of sales and, and marketing and all these different exciting things that you have to share with contractors out there. Again, when we were at Best of Success, and thank you so much for being there, Ryan, um, there was just so much to talk about. Uh, again, one of the things that I'm most excited about spending these time, this time with you on video is being able to kind of dive into some of the details. Mm -hmm. So I know you've got some great things to share, so I'll let you take it from there. All right, so I have a slide here and I'm just gonna present the second lever of how to improve your company closing ratio is have a devoted focus on salespeople. So before we talk about this, I just want to say most companies do a poor job putting real salespeople in a fully focused sales role. And I just want to kind of give you an illustration here. I know if, we've, if we want to improve our closing ratio, putting the right people in the right seats, you've heard that a lot if you're reading the book, Good to Great, and you've heard the right seat, right people in the right seat of the bus. But in sales, if you want to drive growth and improve your closing ratio, this is a huge hack that most people do a poor job paying attention to. But, but we've done some data collection. We have 1,700 plus and growing salespeople that we've evaluated in roofing and other trades. And 55%, based on the standards we set with a part of a data company we use, uh, is, is considered a weak salespeople, salesperson. That doesn't mean they're, they're bad performers or not valuable to your company. But in terms of standard of selling, they're not great. They're probably estimators, uh, project managers, and that's how they really are in their skill development and their career. They haven't really transformed into a salesperson yet. 37% are pretty good. Only 6% are strong and only 1% is elite. And so if you look at that and you just think about it, well, what's the real, real problem here? Well, one is you have the wrong people who are really selling that should be selling, and then in an industry that most people aren't that good. So if you just realize that if I have really good salespeople in an industry where most people are not sales oriented and they're multitasking, we're automatically going to grow just because the landscape is, is that way, right? So if you add that component, you add another part of multitasking. A lot of salespeople are asked to do things that aren't sales related because they're talented and you like them and they're your brother-in-law or somebody you found your, your, your buddy's son's uh, just graduated from college and you love him and your son knows him and he's talented and he joins your team. And, and it's like the same thing, right? And they're good people, but they're not at the standard of sales. And then you have them do a million other things. So let's just do this for a second. Let's take an example of somebody in that serviceable category, right? They're, uh, they're 30 percentile. They're, they're good, but they're spending only 20 percent of their time on high value sales activity versus let's say a strong salesperson who spends 85% of their time on high value sales activity. Does that picture make sense, Jill, to you? Yeah. It's like somebody who's like pretty good, but only spending a fifth of their week on actual really good sales activity. But then you flip the script and you say, what if we had like a high performing salesperson trained, focused, doing nothing but prospecting, having great conversations with really good prospects every single day, and everything else was delegated or automated in some form or fashion. And that's all they did. Like that would probably improve your closing ratio pretty quickly, right? Oh, no doubt. So this just kind of helps you illustrate that. And we love doing like time audits and help you kind of break down how much time you can really just, if you just move the needle in two or three areas, it could really change because finding really good salespeople and training them is, is a very important uh, asset to your business. And sometimes we undervalue really good salespeople who are just good people. So if they're really good people who are skilled, focused, fit your culture. There's a lot to be excited about and we don't want to undervalue that. So another illustration that I like to have here is, you know, we, when I shared this at Best of Success, we were in Dallas. So of course uh, I had to, you know, pick a Dallas cowboy uh, illustration <laughs> metaphor. But um, what the problem is with this picture is that's Dak Prescott. Prescott who's the quarterback for the Cowboys who's supposed to lead the offense and put points on the board, but he's playing defense, trying to sack the quarterback, right. And try to keep the other team from putting points on the board and roofing, right. Or any contracting business sales 
is offense and production is defense, right? Like you're trying to make sure you make money on the job. You're not going to lose the job. You're like, you got to make your margin. So I think some things that are really more defensive that aren't as offensive that we could really, you know, delegate so that we're doing the right, having the right people do the right things is things like takeoffs, like, especially in commercial doing a, like big takeoffs, project management, estimating. I know that sounds like it's on offense, uh, but a really good salesperson could work with somebody else to do that because that could be very time consuming. Uh, I know in residential it's still much shorter, but in commercial that could spend, you could spend four to six hours on a, on a job. And that's, wow. think about that, do two jobs, three jobs a week. That's a full-time job that could be spending, you know, it could have been spent talking to real prospects and generating more new business. Paperwork, uh, CRM stuff, like on self-reporting, ordering materials, right? So we want to make sure that this kind of, you don't want your Dak Prescott playing defense. You want your Dak Prescott doing this when he's not actually on the field, right. which is, you know, all right, I can do a pre-call strategy. I can make my list. I can do my top accounts. I can focus on the next, uh, uh, my next discovery call. I can get coaching, right? I could be prospecting. I could have meetings with existing accounts to develop those and expand uh, this new business and scope of work and do more work with existing accounts. Uh, obviously, in uh, the door-to-door -door world, if you're outside sales, you could be doing direct sales on residential or commercial by door knocking and just actually straight prospecting. Uh, drills, role playing, training, building key strategic relationships and partnerships. So kind of a debrief, I'll just take a step back. You don't want to be a 30%, have your salespeople do 30% of the time, 30% salespeople in a 20% of their time on high value sales activity. You want to invert it, put your Dak Prescott on an offensive mindset every day, and you're going to see an amazing improvement in your closing ratio, like guaranteed, just by making that switch. So prior to this one, we talked about devoted focus on sales process. So it's repeatable and scalable and predictable. And then you put the right athletes in the right seats, um, focusing on their specific ways to grow your business. Uh, that's going to be very powerful. And then next, the next session, we're going to talk about the devoted focus on something else. You're going to have to show up to find out what that is to improve your closing ratio uh, to wrap up this series. So anyway, that's what I got, Jill. Uh, back Fabulous. to you. Thank you so much, Ryan. It's always great to get some good tidbits from you. Uh, if anybody needs to get in touch with Ryan, we're going to put all the details right down below in the, in the copy. So you can find him there. If you need to reach us, you can reach out to me at uh, roofingcontractor.com, wconline.com, or buildingenclosureonline.com. And while you're there, make sure you sign up for our free e-newsletters, our free e-magazines, register for our website so you can receive all the great content that we're putting out with people like Ryan. And everybody, please stay safe and healthy. We look forward to talking to you next time. Hey.